Hello everyone, my name is Michał Herda and welcome to the first online me LISP meeting after the, this year's uh, European LISP Symposium. Uh, I will be talking today about integrating independent condition systems in common LISP. First of all, a very brief summary of our presentation. As a part of implementing the common LISP standard, Every CL implementation has a condition system of its own that we are going to call the host condition system throughout the presentation. We also implement a separate, a portable condition system called the guest condition system. It is fully independent from the host condition system, meaning that no code is shared between the two. The guest doesn't use any kind of conditions, uh, handlers, restart, or debugger functionality from the host. Now that we have the two condition systems, we explore the portable, uh, meaning uh, without any implementation defined functionality, the portable possibilities and ways to integrate them with each other. Uh, some of the techniques uh, will make the host condition system and debugger the primary one, uh, but most of them will focus on the guest being the primary condition system and the debugger under which we integrate everything, mostly because the guest is much more programmable uh, than the host. We have full control over how exactly the guest condition system functions. First of all, let's make a very brief uh, description of what the, the con common lisp condition system consists of. There are condition types which function almost like uh, CLOS standard classes, meaning uh, they have slots, they have multiple inheritance, and they have several more options. Uh, in fact, the similarity is so close uh, that uh, the defined condition macro is almost equivalent to uh, the, to the, the dev class macro, with the exception being no meta class for uh, condition objects and uh, no report option for standard objects. In addition to condition types, we have handlers, which are anonymous pairs, uh, a pair of the condition type for which a given uh, handler is triggered, and the handler function, which is uh, called with the condition object when the handler is triggered. We also have restarts, which are structures with dynamic extent. Uh, this part will become uh, somewhat important later in the presentation, but for now we can skip it. Each restart has a name and from one to four functions. Uh, the restart function that is called when the restart is invoked, the report function to produce a human readable string called the restart re report, the test function that tells us whether the given restart should be visible at any moment and the interactive function whose purpose is to gather uh, to gather uh, arguments for the restart in an interactive environment. We will be using a library called uh, Portable Condition System which unsurprisingly uh, implements a portable condition system. Portable as in uh, without depending on any implementation specific functionality. It is fully independent from the host one, it doesn't use any conditions, any restarts, handlers or the debugger. It uh, passes the relevant uh, ANSI test uh, test suites uh, related to the condition system and to the assertions, meaning the assert, uh, check type uh, and uh, EKCKs case uh, operators. It is based on Kent Pittman's original implementation of the condition system, uh, revision 18. Uh, we have refactored it and brought up to date with the full uh, ANSI command list specification. It was written uh, while working on the upcoming Lisp book named uh, The Common Lisp Condition System. The second part of this book constructs uh, a conformant uh, I mean, uh, the standard conforming uh, condition system, uh, piece by piece, and the result, the end effect, uh, is in this case the portable condition system posted online on GitHub, 
if, if anyone uh, wants to play with it a little bit. Uh, our presentation uh, needs, in my opinion, a color legend because of the large number of symbols that have the same name but uh, are from different packages, like purple ones are the guest condition system symbols. So, for example, PCS uh, colon error names the error package from the PCS package, so the guest error function. Olive uh, symbols are host condition systems, so CL colon error names the host error function. The rest of the colors are syntax sugar, so we have some basic highlighting in our slides. Green are unrelated operators such as uh, defon, def method, and uh, other similar functions. Uh, red are condition types and restart names. Blue are keywords and black, everything else. Let us play with our condition system uh, just a little bit. Uh, in our condition system, we can do one of the basic things, which is defining a new condition type. Such a call, a PCS defined condition, defines a new guest condition type named uh, my condition. We can modify it a little bit to instead create a new error type named my error. We can then try signaling it via the error function, which first of all signals the condition. Signaling means that we check all handlers established by the guest handler binding operators, which are handler case, handler bind, and also ignore errors, which we omit here for brevity. If no handlers whatsoever are found, or rather, if they are found uh, as well, but they fail to transfer control to handle the condition, the debugger is entered. And the debugger that is entered is the PCS one, meaning uh, the portable condition system debugger is invoked and it contains a list of restarts established by PCS, by uh, the guest operators. This is expected since PCS is completely independent from the host condition system. Okay, all of this works fine. We can also handle the error. If we uh, wrap the error uh, signaling form in a handler case, in this case, uh, there is a single uh, handler case form uh, for uh, handling my error conditions. This unsurprisingly returns uh, the keyword over there, got my error. But the situation changes slightly when we leave our comfort uh, comfortable world of PCS and start interfacing a little bit with the outer system of Common Lisp. Over here, we have a division function from the host. Uh, so I have purposefully uh, put the nickname uh, CL uh, in the symbol uh, over there. This is going to signal, uh, unsurprisingly, a division by zero error. One noteworthy thing is that the division by zero comes from the host. It is a host condition type signaled by the host error function. So first and foremost, this is the distinction that we meet. We have host condition types, or rather host error types, and PCS error types. And our PCS handler case only manages to, well, it is completely independent of the host condition system, so it isn't aware of the CL error, of the host error. Therefore, the host error function which functions uh, in a similar way as our guest one. First of all, it checks uh, and calls all the handlers established by the host handler bind, handler case, ignore errors. And if no handler manages to transfer control, the debugger is entered. Once again, this is the host debugger this time with a host condition object. And we land in the host debugger with only host restarts visible. The goal of this presentation is to present techniques for uh, not landing in one or the other debugger, which uh, 
kind of uh, breaks the user, e user experience when using these two condition systems together. Just like the fact that uh, each debugger, uh, each condition system uh, only has one set of restarts established by host uh, re uh, restart binding operator or, or the guest ones. So we would also like to have a list of restarts of both systems uh, that we can invoke. One naive uh, attempt of uh, to attempt to solve this issue is uh, well, the big issue over here is that we have a CL symbol here, the common list division. We could try to define our own division operator that works uh, functionally well. Functionally, it's equivalent to this one, except uh, with an additional uh, type check, or rather, uh, well, it signals its own. ECS division by zero error when it detects that one of the numbers uh, that we divide uh, uh, that we perform division on uh, is, a, is a zero. This might work. I mean, uh, this will work in this particular case. We can define such a function. Uh, we can take the performance hit associated with this. Uh, and we then might need to define a few more just to make everything a little bit consistent. The operation for adding, subtracting, multiplying, exponentiation, a lot of operators that aren't really arithmetic. I mean, uh, string operations, uh, symbol operations and so on, a lot of stuff. And suddenly we find ourselves not really working on conditions anymore, but instead re-implementing re -implementing a large chunk of common lisp. And uh, this isn't really what we wanted to do in the first place, and therefore we will leave this uh, without pursuing this idea further. So instead, I will ask a one million dollar question uh, that this presentation will attempt to resolve. We have a pair of independent condition systems, the host one and the guest one. How do we integrate them seamlessly, or rather as seamlessly as one possibly can? There are four uh, dualities in total that we will need to solve in order to achieve uh, as much seamlessness as, as we can. The first is the fact that we have uh, two hierarchies of condition types. The second, two hierarchies of handlers bound uh, dynamically. The third is the same uh, with re regard to restarts. And the fourth is the fact that we have two independent debuggers. Let us go through these four points in order. First of all, we have two hierarchies of condition types. The class CL condition, the supertype of all host conditions, and the class PCS condition, the uh, supertype of all guest condition types. From definition, they are not a subtype of one another since uh, it would break the independence of the two condition uh, systems. This means that we cannot use a guest condition in a host handler bind or handler case. And the, uh, the other way around, uh, that's, that's true as well. We cannot as associate uh, the guest condition with a host restart when it comes to computing restart visibility. We cannot find or compute restarts, uh, host restarts with a guest condition. And finally, we cannot invoke the host debugger with a guest condition function. This, uh, I mean, uh, most of these statements are true uh, this way around. We could theoretically try to handle the host condition objects in the guest condition system, but doing so would break independence of uh, our condition system. So we will not do this uh, in this presentation. We, we will instead try to uh, merge uh, or integrate these two on uh, interface boundaries as much as possible. Our solution for the two distinction for the two distinct type hierarchies is condition type wrapping, which is basically uh, that we define a foreign condition, which is a guest condition, and 
The host condition is instead stored in one of the slots of each created foreign condition. We also define a generic function host condition to PCS, so it could also be named host condition to guest, which specializes on the host condition objects and that returns guest condition object. An important part of this approach is that it makes it possible to invoke our guest debugger with not exactly but a host condition object. We define also a proper uh, re report option on uh, this, for this foreign condition and if we export this uh, function, uh, this accessor foreign condition, foreign condition, uh, we will also make it possible uh, for the user to inspect the wrapped host condition object in the debugger or programmatically if uh, such is re required. Another important aspect of uh, this approach is that it is extensible. Currently, if we call host condition to PCS on any kind of host condition, we will get a foreign condition object. Uh, sometimes, uh, however, we might, we might want to de detect other subtypes, uh, subtypes of host condition objects, such as, for example, CL warning or CL error. We can define foreign warning, uh, the, the foreign warning type and uh, define a method uh, host condition to PCS on CL warning that instead uh, creates and returns a foreign warning object. The same with foreign error. So uh, suddenly uh, in our handler case we could try uh, having a handler case a handler case, yes, uh, that works on a foreign error and is supposed to, to handle a foreign error conditions such as, in this case, uh, a foreign division by zero error. This form will not work just yet, since we will also need to, some way of integrating the host signaling with our guest signaling, but we will get to it in the future. This also makes it possible to uh, integrate other and uh, more complex uh, condition types, like for example foreign type error. Each uh, type error condition uh, is supposed to have a pair of uh, accessor, uh, sorry, a pair of slots. Speaking uh, somewhat informally, uh, we should be able to extract the datum and the expected type from each such condition. Therefore, in here, not only we specify the foreign condition slot the host condition object, but we also use the host accessors to extract the datum and the expected type, and we also store these in the slots of this uh, wrapping condition object. An alternative is to define a pair of methods on the foreign type error so that they instead directly call the type error datum and type error expected type functions of the host. But for clarity, we instead choose this way. These two are fully equivalent. Now that the condition objects are mostly done, we can move over to handlers. In this case, uh, we can expect that the handlers of uh, host condition system and the guest condition system can be intertwined uh, with each other. And this doesn't need to be just a series of handler binned calls like this, or even like this, a little bit more complex, but we can instead expect that there is a series of nested function calls, each of which is allowed to bind a handler, or three, or five, of its own. And so deeply in the stack, we can expect to have some guest handlers and host handlers defined. When we expect the internal state of each handler subsystem, uh, we can see something like this. The host handlers stores only the information about the host handlers, which in this case, uh, uh, they are for condition type E, C, A, and that's all. The guest handlers also store information related to the guest condition types, in this case, F, D, B. 
even if we assume for a moment that the condition types are compatible, like we can handler bins, uh, uh, we can switch the condition types between handler bins, we cannot easily recover the exact order of handlers of all handlers that happened in the code. This is because in here we only have partial information, a part of the full uh, handler stack, or rather just one handler stack, because right now we have two, the host one, the guest one. This has one implication for us. Uh, we cannot easily, in a portable way, recover this information, since we would need access to the internal symbol of the host which we don't want, uh, since it's uh, not really portable common lisp. We would optionally need access to the handler objects them themselves. If we had some sort of uh, objects for whom we can operate on, the, like we can, if we had the, these objects, we could compare them using the equality of some sort, so some equality predicates, and compute have they already been met? Could we wrap them in something else? Could we perhaps have been the handler of our own uh, on the guest side and so on and so on? We cannot though. There is no operator named compute handlers, so uh, all we can do here is uh, just speculate. Additionally, we could try expanding PCS handler bind into a CL handler bind as well, so we also bind some restarts on the host side. But this has a pretty sad implication. Since we now bind handlers on the host side, we need some kind of uh, foreign conditions on the host side as well. And either we would uh, only handle foreign condition without really checking what kind of condition it might be on the guest side, or we would need to error on unknown condition types at macro expansion type, at macro expansion time uh, preferably, or we would need to uh, automatically generate condition types on the host side, which is a pretty dirty solution in my opinion, and therefore we do not uh, follow it. Therefore our workaround for this is uh, the best we can portably do, uh, at least I think uh, the best we can do, uh, appending the handler lists uh, to one another. So we can go with host uh, handlers first, guest handlers second, or the other way around. And nothing uh, really better. Uh, we are not aware of any better solution than that. The situation with restarts is somewhat similar. We still have a binding operator. The only thing that differs is that we do not have uh, condition types, or other type specifiers over here. Uh, we have uh, restart names. But still, when we inspect the internal structure of each uh, internal variable, both on the host and the guest side, we have a similar situation. Each, uh, uh, each variable, uh, each list on, uh, only holds a part of the whole information, and we do not directly have the order of everything, of the restarts as they were bound, uh, in the dynamic environment uh, in which we are working. And again, uh, recovering this order would require one of three things. Access to the internal symbol, or some means of computing restarts, or uh, expanding our guest uh, restart bind into a host restart bind, again, sacrificing independence in the, in, uh, in the process. However, there is one difference between this slide about restarts and the previous slide about handlers that allows us to use a somewhat different thing. In particular, we are able to compute restarts, we are able to retrieve restart objects, which, which are first class, uh, uh, not, uh, not, uh, like, uh, not like, not uh, like, sorry, handler objects, and so we can operate on them. Our technique for this one is called the wrapping restarts, which functions just a little bit like uh, foreign condition uh, objects, but it's a little bit more advanced. First of all, we are able to compute host restarts. So sometimes we also have a condition object uh, that is passed uh, for us, 
For example, uh, when we try to invoke the host debugger, we uh, always have the condition uh, which the debugger was entered with. We are able to map one to one uh, the host restart object into a wrapped restart object on the guest side. It is a subtype of the standard restart, except it also has a slot for the foreign, rather uh, the host restart that we wrap around. We will uh, need to, f uh, in order to implement a restart uh, that wraps the host one, we will need to implement these five functionalities that I have mentioned earlier. First, the name, that can be the same as the host restart name. There is no collision in here, like uh, uh, in case of condition types, uh, they are named by symbols. A symbol can only name one class or type. This is why we cannot have uh, as, uh, two distinct condition types with the same name, and we have to go CL symbol, uh, sorry, CL condition, and PCS condition, for example. In restarts, we do not have that limitation. We can make a host restart and a guest restart with the same name. Then there come the four functions. The report function, we can delegate to reporting the host condition. Sorry, the host restart object. Test function, we can also uh, refer to the test function of the host restart by means of calling find restart with it. That will return true uh, if the restart is visible, false otherwise. Uh, the two issues that we have is the restart function and the interactive function. We have no means of retrieving either of them in a portable way. So we have nothing to put in the slots of the wrapped restart. The lucky thing is that we do not have to do so. All we need to do is to ensure that invoke restart and invoke restart interactively, that these two functions work well on this wrapped restart. We can do so by defining a pair of methods. Uh, in PCS, invoke restart and invoke restart interactively are generic functions. So we can define new methods on them uh, that specialize on the wrapped restart class. Uh, and they are going to call either invoke restart of the host on the host restart objects, the object with the provided arguments, or call the invoke restart interactively function on the host side with the host restart. Therefore, we bypass the need to access the restart function and the interactive function themselves. And we instead uh, simply use the existing host functionality to implement our guest methods. This allows us to introduce new automatic bindings for wrapped restarts. Automatic as in our uh, PCS uh, operators, our uh, PCS functions, if like uh, the uh, find restart or compute restarts or the macro restart bind can automatically detect and either return or bind post restart objects wrapped with our guest uh, the wrapped restart objects. This happens be because we fully control our guest condition uh, system. Therefore, we can write uh, content of the restart bind, we also have uh, the full possibility to bind our own uh, internal variable uh, that contains the dynamic state of the restart subsystem. Uh, one limitation of this technique that uh, these uh, wrapped restarts are only visible in the guest system, uh, which we will uh, use from now on. Like, uh, we cannot create wrapped restarts on the host side because of two issues. First, we cannot portably create a subclass of CL restart. Second, uh, even if we didn't uh, like, if we did not really subclass the CL restart, we could store the association between uh, restart, the host restarts, and uh, how to say it, uh, guest restart objects in some kind of external hash table. This is possible but we have no way of knowing when exactly to remove entries from this. This must be when the host restart goes out of scope. Because of dynamic extent of restart objects, 
we now have uh, a likely uninitialized or corrupted memory uh, where the reference to the old restart object pointed to. And this might either crash our image immediately or it might crash it later. It's undefined behavior at this point. So sadly, the inverse is not portable and we cannot really have a host debugger, uh, the host restart system, portably take over from here. Our algorithm for choosing how uh, and which restarts uh, to print is the following. First of all, we get a list of all host restarts. If we happen to have a condition uh, object, then we provide it as the optional argument to filter out the host restarts that we do not want to, to be there. We also compute a list of all guest restarts that uh, are already bound. And then, some of these guest restarts might be wrapped restarts, like for example, some previous guest handler bind might have already established some wrapped host restarts. We need to take it into account in order not to bind the same host restart twice. Like we, co uh, we could just bind uh, each host restart multiple times, but it will bring uh, likely just a programmer confusion and also uh, will not work well with, when it comes to order of all the restarts on our list. Therefore, we will want to filter out the host restarts which we have already bound. For this, we, uh, we iterate through the guest restarts and if that restart is a wrapped restart, then it means that its host uh, restart object was already accounted for. So uh, we discard this object from the first uh, from the list that we have computed in the first step we will no longer uh, process this restart in the future. when this iteration completes all that is left is the list of remaining host restarts remaining meaning that either they were freshly bound like they were bound by the host or they have just become visible for example the, like uh, the, the test function for that uh, restart has just returned true, or the, uh, this restart has become associated with a condition for which we now uh, tested the host restarts. This means that for those host restarts, we want to create wrapped restarts to plug them into our guest restart subsystem. And once uh, such a wrapped restart is created, we either bind them in case of restart bind, or we return them. A single restart in case of uh, portable condition system find restart function, or the whole list in case of our compute restart. This means that such a following uh, form where we have uh, the host the bin the restart A, C, E will be accounted for now and our system will de detect these restarts and bin them here in the guest restart subsystem this means that just by checking the guest list of all restarts we will have A, B from the first binding form C, D from the second E, F, and the third, and so we are able to preserve the exact order of all guest restarts. Uh, a technical detail is that uh, A, C, and E are of type uh, PCS wrapped restart and they refer to the host restarts, but uh, the end user doesn't need to care about it. For all purposes, th uh, this first point uh, doesn't concern them because each such restart is still of type PCS restart subtype sure but still they are PCS restarts and they refer to the host restarts of type CL restart this uh, doesn't uh, in any way uh, interfere with the dynamic extent of host restarts because when this A restart over here goes out of scope 
So does this one. It's possible that there is some uh, code uh, before or, or after this form, but uh, this restart is no longer visible in them, and so this code doesn't need to concern itself with the dynamic extent of a restart of our guest restart, just that that has already been this established. Summary of our technique is these uh, new wrapped restarts is, are only visible in the guest condition system, meaning that we cannot really do this on the host condition. Also, one uh, possibly important thing is that we can lose a restart identity on the guest side, which, in, which is, in this case, with the restart bind, we are, are able to bind the particular restart on the, in, in our uh, variable, in our internal state. And we can memorize that this particular wrapped restart is wrapping over this host restart. This is fine, we can use this information later. Uh, and pass possibly the restart object around in the code, if we are doing some uh, restart fiddling. However, in case of find restart and compute restarts, it is possible and actually expected that several subsequent, for example, calls to PCS find restart are going to return new wrapped restart object. This is before, uh, because this algorithm is going to fail for restarts or host restarts which uh, do not yet have a wrapped restart uh, on the stack. Like find a restart and compute restarts do not establish new restarts, and so therefore, therefore they cannot memorize the newly created PCS wrapped restart object, so they need to create it anew every time. It is possible to work around this issue by comparing uh, not the restart, uh, the wrapped restart objects for identity, but the host restarts that they wrap. Nonetheless, it is a, mi a minor downside of our approach. For the upsides, the wrapped restarts can, may, can have annotated reports or make any kind of... Uh, I mean, the programmer clearly knows or can know that a given restart came from the host and not from the guest. So the programmer can, for example, annotate the report to uh, let the programmer know that a particular uh, restart came from the host and not from the guest. Also, the ordering of the restarts is completely arbitrary. This algorithm it more or less resembles the order of binding uh, the guest and host restarts, even if they are intertwined, but nothing prevents uh, the programmer from uh, listing the host restarts first or last or doing any other transformations on their order. This is because we fully control uh, our uh, dynamic variable that sets the order of all the restarts. Uh, both of the above, meaning annotated reports and sorting uh, wrapped uh, restarts below, are the current uh, default behavior of a portable condition system, as it is on GitHub right now. So, we have uh, done conditions uh, right now. We have uh, gone through handlers and uh, we have gone through restarts. The last part of our presentation is going to focus on tying the knot uh, to quote Robert Strand from his own work on uh, SQL, uh, we will want to be able to go from a host condition object to the guest debugger. In case of a guest condition object, the path, if, the path is very simple. Uh, the error function calls invoke debugger with the condition object. That's all. In case of the host, the situation is also very simple. CL error, the host error function, calls the host invoke debugger function. And the big issue is that this part is something we do not control. We have no control over how the error function is programmed, and we have little, very little control, and nothing portable to add, over what exactly happens in the host invoke debugger function. What we want 
host debugger to do is call the host condition to CS function to transform the host condition object into a guest condition and then to also give uh, the guest handlers a chance to execute so we want to call PCS error with this newly wrapped condition of we control uh, all the uh, all the parts marked with purple in here we cannot really do much uh, related to all the parts that, that are olive so our situation will need to focus on subverting overriding system the host debugger so it instead of uh, performing its normal debugger operation calls our code that uh, transforms the host condition object into a test condition object and then calls our debugger. We have two debuggers over here, which means uh, not exactly twice the problems, because just one debugger, the host one, uh, gives us enough trouble to kick our portable solutions out of mostly because there is no portable solution for what we attempt to do. Common Lisp debugger is not specified in detail by the Common Lisp standard. The only part that might be used to control the debugger behavior is the variable debugger hook. In particular, if we call invoke debugger or if we call error, it is possible to bind this variable to a function that is executed before the debugger is called. However, there is also one operation that disables the debugger hook before the debugger is entered, and that is break. Therefore, the debugger hook variable, as much as it is used by, for example, slime or sly or bug clean debuggers, is not the full solution. It is impossible to control the behavior of break uh, using just portable mechanisms. In addition, uh, if we wanted to forego uh, trying to control break and instead wanted to control the debugger, there is no way of doing that. Uh, there is no standard interface for modifying the debugger, mostly because uh, no such thing uh, needs to exist. Like uh, an implementation could even crash on an unhandled error and I guess it would still conform to the specification. Therefore, uh, since we are pretty much pressed to the wall in here, we go for one portability library that allows to specify a custom debugger function. This, function, uh, this library follows the naming conventions for re re really trivial libraries and so is called Trivial Custom Debugger allows the programmer to specify a custom debugger function in a given dynamic scope, meaning that it is not installed globally and instead is uh, installed uh, in some dynamic scope. Or, if someone uh, really wants uh, to, uh, don't mind that, it's supposed to mean sc to read scope. Uh, or to install globally and therefore completely disable the system provided debugger of the host. Uh, this library uh, is available, I think it is already available on Quick, but you'll need to check. It's been added in the previous list, might be this one. Oh well, it's available from GitHub, in case uh, someone wants to play with it. CS debugger itself, uh, when it comes to uh, maintaining the integration, is implemented in a way that one would expect it to be. Uh, there are two parts to it. The first one, the boring one, is for handling the debugger hook. The second one is for calling the standard debugger function that is implemented by PC. The more important part is the fact that invoke debugger in PCS is again a generic function. And so it is possible, or rather it becomes possible, to invoke the PCS debugger with a CL condition object. First of all, this host condition object is transformed to the guest one by means of host condition to PCS function. Then the condition is signaled 
the, uh, to ensure that the handlers for uh, on the guest side also have a chance of sing of handling the condition and then the standard pcs debugger is entered with the foreign uh, condition a keen eye may notice that we always signal the condition in here even in situations where uh, where we might want it this is because uh, of one more limitation of the common disk debugger which means it doesn't know why exactly it was entered there is no kind of reason argument passed to the debugger that could have been useful in this situation uh, because the debugger could have been entered due to a direct entry for example invoke debugger or break or it could have been entered because of a failure handle an error in case of error or C error call because of this uh, the PCS uh, debugger must make a choice how to treat all entries with foreign conditions to treat them always as calls to error or C error where a condition might one uh, might have been signaled previously before entering the debugger or always as break or, or invoke debugger when the condition is not signaled therefore invoking no handlers and uh, well uh, just the, the, the debugger is entered there is no good approach here because one approach breaks the hosts invoke debugger and break functions and the other one if we treat them always as break and invoke debugger breaks the host error and C error Therefore, it's uh, troublesome for us because we, we need to choose. We either break break or we break error. In this case, the calls to error and C error are seen commonly in code, whereas uh, break and invoke debugger either rarely or used by the programmer uh, to help them with debugging and therefore not really ending up in uh, real uh, production code. Therefore, we choose to always treat uh, C error and error, uh, sorry, we choose to treat all foreign condition enters as C error error calls, therefore giving our signals, uh, our, uh, sorry, uh, the guest handlers a chance to run. This breaks the host uh, invoke debugger and break functions for which we provide a workaround to interactively use the guest break and invoke debugger functions, which are going to work. After all this time, uh, well, it's been three quarters already. Uh, I have a pair of small examples. First of all, let us attempt uh, a very small uh, or small seeming thing we use the with debugger macro from a trivial custom debugger. We use our custom debugger function from PCS and we try to add two and two, which obviously produces a type error. Here we have the PCS debugger printing its uh, information. This is the report the guest condition, which we have mentioned earlier that also reports the foreign condition, the host one. And in here we obviously see that it is the host type error that has been signaled. That is one part of the integration related to condition object. The other one is that the PCS debugger, uh, when it is integrated uh, with the host, is smart enough to use the restarts. In this case, uh, colon abort Normally, uh, uh, looks for the restarts named after the guest abort signal. Sorry, uh, uh, guest abort symbol. After integration, uh, the debugger becomes a little bit smarter and also searches for CL abort, so the host uh, symbol name, and if found, invokes such a restart. This will become a little bit clearer, I hope, in the second example where we use the most infamous operator that we have mentioned earlier, which is break on the host side. The host's break should, and in normal situations will, always directly enter the host debugger, 
But in the dynamic extent of the width debugger macro, our PCS debugger is instead entered. We can list all restarts, and all four in this uh, case come from the host, which is marked by a little star over here, and we can invoke any of them. In this case, uh, if we choose the second restart, uh, we call abort, and uh, we end up uh, back in the REPL. Okay, summarizing therefore, uh, or rather not summarizing, uh, mentioning future work that should be possible with this. Uh, to explore the usability of uh, integrating multiple condition systems for other real life cases. First and most important for me at least case was its, educa was its educational value. This is because PCS is in some way directly a teaching tool that should help uh, other people understand how a condition system can be implemented in a portable way uh, with or without the help of the upcoming book, the Common Lisp Condition System. The code should itself be readable enough on its own without the book for a person who wants to understand what a Lisp Condition System uh, looks like, how it is constructed, and how it could be constructed even in a different programming language. However, it should be also possible, since I thought of it uh, some time ago, to explore this in case of languages that compile to C. For example, if we have some kind of game scripting language that, that compiles to CL, we might want it to use its own condition system instead of the host one. In this case, the programmer, when trying to debug both of them, like uh, the code that mixes uh, bunches of uh, the game scripting code and common lisp, they might want to be uh, to have a cost, uh, a common debugger lists the cases, the restarts, and uh, is able to ca to handle conditions from both systems at the same time, purely for programmer convenience. It might also be worthy to explore uh, solutions that are uh, not trying to be pure in the portability meaning. Uh, but instead dive into implementation details. For example, it might uh, a library might want to dive into internals of the handler subsystem to be able to operate on handlers themselves. The way we uh, the way that we can portably do with restarts, for example, memorizing them, operating them uh, by the uh, by their identity and so on. Uh, we have no compute handlers operation. But a portability library, I imagine, could uh, to say it, it could uh, introduce one. And the third option is the fact that uh, this uh, work that I have presented here is purely exploratory. I mean, uh, I do not claim that the solutions that I, uh, I present here are the only ones, or even that they are the best ones. I think that there are some other ways uh, tweaking the restart. Uh, and handler subsystem of tweaking the condition types that would make for even better integration or slightly different one that also has some curious properties. So if anyone uh, has any ideas uh, of how to make this better or more interesting or more useful, I think uh, it's more definitely possible to do so. By now, I think someone has already posted uh, on Twitch the link uh, to the Jitsi uh, Meet site where we, we will have a small virtual chat uh, in a moment. Uh, so see the Twitch chat for links to, to, to this service. Uh, also, there's a Twitch chat, like you have probably noticed by now, uh, for commenting on uh, this presentation, on any other list related stuff and so on. Uh, so feel, feel free to use it, uh, feel free to join the Jitsi Meet, uh, or both at the same time. And thank you, thank a lot. Thanks a lot, thank you for your time. That's the end of the, pr the presentation.